Okay, here's a super quick, easy how to make a wart chiller. Um, things you're gonna need. Things you're gonna need. Copper tubing. Um, I heard the smaller is the better. I figured it was too hard to work with quarter inch and it wouldn't last me, let alone making hoses fit on quarter inch wouldn't work very well either. Um, so I went with three A's and I did 10 feet. You could do 20 feet if you wanted. Um, so copper pipe, I used three A's inch, 10 feet long. Uh, hose. This is just regular generic clear hose. Um, I had some laying around yet. And then I used an old garden hose. Uh, you can use a fitting that will go on your sink also, but I I just prefer to hook it to the garden hose. It was my easiest fitting. And I have a tap in the basement it works for. Um, and then little tiny o-ring screws and zip ties. I used my corny keg. You could use whatever you want. Um, I started by working my shape first, knowing what end I wanted to come out and what what direction I wanted everything to be. I faced both of mine out so that it can sit in my bucket. I can have the water coming in this way. I can empty into another bucket and collect the warm water and reuse it for something else. I'm all about recycling too. Uh, so I took my first run and I made a loop around the bottom of the corny keg. I made a loop around the bottom of the corny keg with my wire and I, did, I needed to know how high up I was going to go so I measured my bucket went right around that height and I brought my inlet my, my inlet valve in. Um, I'm sorry, my outlet valve and measured how high out I needed it to come so I wouldn't run out. So I took that chunk, I laid it off to the side, and then made my first ring around my corny keg. Coming up, I just made sure I was tight and pushing against it, turning my keg. Pushing against it, turning my keg. You don't have to use a keg. Any kind of circle that is, what, 10 inches wide is going to work for you? 10 to 12, I'd say and still fit in your bucket or your brew pot. Um, if you're going for big batches, use 20 feet of copper coil. This is going to work fine for me. Um, I worked it all the way up and brought it over. And the one that you have coming off your coil is your inlet valve. So it comes in the top, comes all the way down through the bottom, and then up through the top. Remember we had a chunk that we just left off to the side of our corny keg, enough to get up high enough to where you need to be. So then after our coil's all made, we bring this, slip it up to as high as we're going to want it, and ring it over. At this point, I removed my corny keg, and that was a little tricky part because it was tight, and I didn't want to ruin my shape, I didn't want to kink my coil. Be very, very careful not to kink your coil. Uh, I worked it off, set it to the side, and then I started with zip tying it every so often. And working my outline up. I brought my outline and secured it to my top inline as close as I could get and brought it out. Next it's time to connect your hoses and you're pretty much done. I used regular garden hose but my garden hose was a hair too big so I took a chunk of my plastic tubing cut it off 
Oh, I think it's maybe even four or five inches long. Slipped it on and then slipped my garden hose over that. On the other side, I have just a regular clear plastic hose that fits right on it. Tighten it up with that O-ring real nice. So then when we got a brew made, which we don't today, I use a five gallon bucket as a fermenter. You can use your pot to stick it into, but either way, drop it in, sanitize it obviously, hook it up to your water source, turn it on a slow flow, and set another bucket out, collect your water, do whatever you want with the water too I guess. You could let it run onto the ground for all I care. Uh, it fits pert near perfect for what I use. That's all I got.